Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Bowtie Economics. Discretionary effort, that's today's topic. What is it? It's certainly a hot topic at the moment across all organisation within the corporate arena. I've defined discretionary effort to be an individual's decision to commit effort above a pre-described amount required or the pre-described amount part. Now, as any economist, I like coming up with equations, equations that can help solve that problem. So here it is. The greater the engagement, the greater the discretionary effort. The greater the discretionary effort, the greater the release of value, the greater release of value, the greater conversion rate of ordinary profit into an extraordinary profit. Let's shake that down. The first piece, engagement. What is it? Engagement, very simply, is a shift from a commitment to a conviction. By that I mean there is a physical commitment to arrive at work in whatever the form to fulfill a particular task. But when that physical commitment moves to a psychological conviction, something different happens. Another way of saying that is moving from the meaningless to the meaningful, or from a baseline level of understanding of something to a belief that you're contributing to something greater than you. Almost in a, in a utilitarian type sense of a moral action being governed by that which increases utility. Now that can be done in a nasty way or in a noble way. Nasty being greed, self-fulfilling, or noble, meaning that I will sacrifice myself for the greater good of the many. Now, discretionary effort, simple terms, is an individual commitment to a task, to a job, to an enterprise. So when you talk about it collectively, it gets difficult, complex, filled with distractions and plenty of white noise. So let's break down an individual. You've got blue collar workers, white collar workers, and this new phenomenon called a no collar worker. A no collar worker simply is not governed by anyone or anything. Today, they're not satisfied with the glossary of their knowledge, which they had yesterday, so to speak. Now, a blue collar worker essentially sells their time in the sense that if you want more of their time, you will trade that with more money to them, which they value, given that in most cases they're on the lower income bracket. A knowledge worker equally will be rewarded with money and time, but there's a different layer of commitment there and different structures, incentive-based programs, bonuses, for example, which don't necessarily motivate uh, more output. The no-collar. What motivates a no-collar? That free thinker. Perhaps it's that contribution to something greater than self. Perhaps it's that end result of a deep conversation with an enterprise, an alignment of values, a sense of morality, a sense of something of noble significance. The profit part of the equation. Profit gets forecasted within a business for a particular term, and there's an expectation by the investors of that business embedded within a share price that's ever-changing and ever-moving, as we know. One thing that doesn't come into that equation, however, is quantifying that release of discretionary effort. In the sense that why it is a hot topic is that I believe businesses are starting to understand that if you're able to somehow release it, you can turn an ordinary profit into an extraordinary one. So how do you do that? At its very core, my belief is that it stems first and foremost from communication. Now I've said before that the provision of information is not communication. Communication in its richest form is a deep conversation and dialogue over a long period of time, building essentially a level of trust. A level of trust such that the relationship starts to blossom. When that happens, as it does within an individual in a spiritual sense, between an employee and an employer, magic starts to happen. 
That's it for today. Quite a revolutionising uh, formula there, linking employee engagement to extraordinary profit with discretionary effort and value sitting in between. And I'd like to explore that more over the coming weeks. Thanks for tuning in to Bowtie Economics. Goodbye.